Gaurav. Uh, hi everyone, my name is uh, Laksh and uh, today we'll start with the introduction to CCNA. It's just an introduction and uh, I will be letting you know of what, will we, what we will be learning in, uh, in this course and what are the different types uh, of uh, uh, chapters and what will what we will learn inside those chapters as we move through the CCNA course. So this is just an introduction to CCNA as well as to something called as computer networks. Uh, I hope you guys would have learned about computer networks in your uh, college time. So uh, let me share my screen first. Uh, um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, this is Vignesh here. So can you, uh, no, before proceeding further, can you just give you a short intro about yourself, like how much years of experience you have in networks uh, and what is the current uh, role like uh, before proceeding? All right. So I work with the company, obviously, because you guys are uh, studying for CCNA, it's the full form is Cisco Certified Network Associate. And I work for the company Cisco and I have uh, nine years of experience and uh, I have completed CCIE service provider and I am a specialist in CCNP Encore and uh, SP Core and majorly I have worked with uh, routing and switching technologies uh, mainly for uh, Australian and uh, American, Canadian and European customers. So currently I am working with C uh, Cisco and with Cisco it's been almost three years now and previously I was working for uh, Cap Germany uh there also i was working in the technologies uh, related to routing and switching so my major experience is with the routing and switching technologies and i have a good grasp over them uh and i hope i will be able to share um, uh as much as uh, as much as possible uh that is my knowledge and experience with you people so i hope you guys uh, like that and let's uh, i hope uh, and let's get started so once, uh, let me know if you start seeing the screen. Yes, it's visible. Thank you. Okay, so do you see the uh, full screen as a presentation mode or do you see a slide? Slide, so, full screen. No, it's a full screen. Point. Full screen slide. Okay, all right. And just also let me know if you see uh, if I write anything over here. Do you see those? Yes, things? working. Yep. Right. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, <clears throat> so this as my name is Laksh, and this is an introduction to CCNA as well as something called as uh, computer networks. Yes. So okay. In this course or in this session today, what we will understand is first, what is computer networks? And we will understand it with real time examples uh, that we always see in day to day life. And we will also see about the computer networks rules. I mean, I mean basically, uh, whatever you do in your life, there should be a some there should be some rules and regulations with which you need to follow it. So computer networks also follows it and there are in these rules basically we will learn about different different layers of uh, those rules so i'll tell you what are those layers one by one as we move on so the first layer is which uh, is which uh, we basically call as physical layer where we mostly study about wires and cables and after that we go to a layer called as data link layer and we study something about LAN and not just LAN, things related to LAN, how LAN is controlled, how devices talk to each other in a LAN, all those things. And okay. then we move to a something called as network layer. And this is uh, the major chunk of our computer networks where we study about uh, the network layer. So in network layer, we will study how a packet or a traffic flows from an end to end device. That means I'm speaking to you, you are seeing my video, you're seeing, you can hear me, uh, you even I can hear you. So all this messages or all this information, how does it flow from my laptop to your laptop? Yeah. How do you see it? So all those things we will understand in the network layer. The, then 
you have something called as the transport layer where you now uh, my device is sending some information to you or uh, to your device that means and your device is basically giving my device an acknowledgement that it has received it right so all those things in uh, in real time where do where do we see these things we will understand that and the last layer is called as application layer where basically everyone when we type google.com on a chrome server or firefox or anywhere right okay. the page the page basically loads the page basically loads and you see something on the google.com so what happens behind that when you type google.com that is the part in the application layer then we'll understand once you know all these layers uh what are the things that you can do with them what are the different technologies that you can make use of these four or five layers that you study and then with that where can you see yourself in the future this is what we are going to study in this small session so <clears throat> moving on the first part the computer networks okay now uh, this is a very basic scenario okay so you see there are uh, two emojis imagine this is yourself right this is yeah. you and okay. you you have a friend sitting right you uh, are on a phone using facebook and your friend is using a laptop and he is using facebook you both are chatting with each other so it's pretty simple for you it means that you are connected to your wifi in your home right yeah. and then your friend is connected to his wifi at his home or office or anywhere wherever he's sitting and then you guys are talking to each other that's as simple as that for you but really in computer networks it is not as simple as it looks for you that internet or the computer networks or the communication that we are yep. basically talking about is happening in this tick area the understanding the stick area is a bit complex but then once you understand it it's very easy to understand how you and your friend who are miles apart kilometers apart or even countries apart talk to each other okay okay this is the study of computer networks meaning how two networking device laptop tv uh, uh your mobile phone your wifi router or any thing that can be connected to internet is a networking device and how these two devices talk to each other is the study of computer networks okay <clears throat> now first thing when we talk about computer networks the first thing that comes in our head is internet okay so basically whatever we talked about here is basically like we say that i am talking to my friend over internet right so that's the first thing what is internet can anyone tell me what do you mean by internet or what is your understanding of internet internet is basically uh, uh, okay whoever is answering of, okay whoever is answering please um, uh, just uh, tell your name and then answer okay my name is amrit pal amrit pal singh yes amrit and okay so basically uh, in my knowledge internet is basically a connection of networks mm -hmm. uh, throughout this world means for example uh, airtel is having another ne a single network and some other companies having a network all these networks are interconnected so yes and they make a path or a web means that that means that's my knowledge is it correct uh yes it's absolutely correct okay anyone yeah. else would like to add or would say that amritpal is uh, wrong anyone else would like to share hello sir hello sir yes tell me i am asif from sirnagar yes um, uh, in my knowledge a global uh computer network providing a variety of information communication facilities okay that is also one answer yes so <clears throat> uh thank you shiv so internet has many different definitions according to the usage or uh, how you use it 
okay some people uh, may say for them internet is facebook for them they say internet is facebook some say uh, the internet for them is google okay but no okay. facebook and google is not internet facebook google yahoo or any other things they are basically their own networks okay or they are basically their it's a basically a server okay yep. yahoo has its own server facebook has its own server google has its own server okay and yep. they are a network in themselves okay and yes. they are connected to each other like just in this diagram for example you can see there are servers there are laptops there are mobile phones there are uh, uh, other devices okay which basically if you see you can see they are basically connected okay and this and all of them they are basically forming a small network of their own they are forming a small network of their own and inter connection of these networks is called as internet internet the interconnection of these networks are is called as internet okay now this internet is basically <clears throat> another way of looking at internet is the path the path i would say the path yeah. to reach to reach different networks the path to reach different network is called as internet okay another example is your wifi okay uh, for example this is the your wifi modem okay and that wifi modem is basically sending data and your mobile phone is connected mobile phone is connected your tv is connected and your laptop is connected okay and all of them or for example there are multiple mobile users in your home your parents your brothers and sisters all of them are using phones okay and okay you guys have formed a small network of your own okay. okay now not only you can talk to each of these devices inside the network but you can also talk to another network that is outside your local network right so basically again you are having an inter connection of networks okay so this is just a basic understanding of what internet is i okay. i have a question sir yes can i yeah yeah please ask okay sir basically who is making the network over here in this diagram our wifi means the wifi is the main device which is making the network okay uh, i'll exp uh, can i answer or, or can you can i answer this question once we uh, end the session because okay. you have asked okay. the, you have asked a question which is uh, uh, which will be in the part Discussed of the after. after okay yes it will be okay understand understand no worries no worries yeah you can explain afterwards also you yes, can continue now you. yeah thank you <clears throat> okay so as i was saying as we are talking over the internet okay when we are talking over the internet now as i was saying we i said about a networking device like a mobile phone and then i yeah. said there is a wifi modem or a router yeah. okay. okay and then you would have already heard of some devices called as routers or switches or uh, uh, you know your laptop or any networking device so if these networking devices are talking to each other they should use some rules and regulations to talk to each other without a particular rule or regulation there will be complete chaos in the network so if two devices for example this is a mobile phone okay this is my mobile phone and this is my friend's mobile phone okay yeah. and we are using whatsapp okay we are chatting over whatsapp so okay. if my mobile phone or if i am sending some message over my whatsapp to my friend's whatsapp number okay yeah. there should there will be a rule and regulation that my mobile has to follow to create a message 
message. And okay. then that message is sent across via the network and or the internet and reaches my friend's phone. That rule and regulation is uh, something we call it as TCP IP model. Okay. Um, just uh, how do I erase few things? We call it as TCP IP model, right? Now this, <clears throat> this is just an, uh, the diagram that you see in front of yourself is not the exact TCP IP model, but this is called as OSI, OSI model. The full okay. form of, uh, <clears throat> Okay, so it is called as OSI model. The difference between OSI and TCP model is that the layer five, layer six, and layer seven is singularly called as application layer in the TCP IP model. We'll go through these layers one by one in the next coming few of the uh, few of the next slides. Okay, <laughs> so do not worry about okay. what are these. Okay, just this okay. is just an example of what happens. Now, as I was uh, saying about the example where my WhatsApp is talking to a WhatsApp on another phone. So what yeah. happens is that when I am creating a message, for example, let's yeah. say I typed a message. How are you? How are you? Okay. This is the message that I typed. Yeah. Now what happens is that when I typed this message, okay, yeah. I am typing this message over the application layer. What is the application that I'm using? I'm using an application called WhatsApp. Okay. That WhatsApp message, how are you is basically, we call it as encapsulated, meaning it is getting wrapped encapsulated. Or can we, can, can, we can we call it as encrypted also? Um, no, not encryption. No. Encryption okay. does not happen here. Okay. Okay. Encryption happens in a few other layers beyond this. Right. Okay. So <laughs> encryption is a part of security. Okay. Uh, okay. right. And that security does not, uh, uh, you know, happen over this layer, right? There are okay. few different layers. Like, you know, you have presentation session, transport layer, all these, they also provide security to it. <clears throat> And network layer also provides security to it. So uh, uh, I'm not going to get inside encryption for now, but I'm going to just talk about encapsulation. Okay. Encapsulation means, you know, capsules, right? When you take medicines, it's called, it, it looks something like this, right? It, a capsule. So similarly inside the capsule, you have small, small medical, uh, you have small, small balls, which basically are the medicines and they are wrapped inside a capsule. So similarly, your messages like how are you is basically encapsulated in the presentation layer that is called as the layer six. Then this presentation layer is basically encapsulated by the session and so on. Okay. Now this is what you call as encapsulation. Now in this physical layer, your message, how are you message is basically converted into a light pulse or an electrical pulse. Okay. Till here, your data, till your data link layer or your layer two, your messages are in the form of binary. I hope you guys know what is a binary format, right? Ones and zeros basically. Okay. Yes, they are in a know. format of ones and zeros, right? Now in the physical layer, your information how are you is converted into the light or an electrical signal and it is sent across the internet and the internet and this message then reaches your friend's phone and your friend's phone basically starts to decapsulate. It starts to decapsulate the message that it received. 
the message it received was in the form of light or electrical signals right it converts it back into the binary format that is ones and zeros okay and starting from the data link layer we'll go one by one okay starting from the data link layer it starts to read the information in the layer 2 then layer 3 layer 4 layer 5 layer 6 and finally when it opens the layer 7 message or when it opens the layer 7 it will see the message how are you sent by me okay so when base when your mobile phone is creating a message it is encapsulating the data from layer 7 down to layer 1 when your phone is reading a data or yeah when your phone is basically reading a data it is reading the information from top sorry from down to bottom that is from layer 1 to layer 7 okay do not get confused for now because i'll in my next few slides i'll start explaining what are these layers and what do we understand or what your networking device reads in all these layers okay <clears throat> Any confusion in how things move across or how uh, things are encapsulated and decapsulated? Any question with this? All right. I'll take no. that as a no. I'll take that as a no. No problem. Now, <clears throat> physical layer. The first layer, physical layer, okay. You believe it or not, our networking or internet cannot work without wires. You need wires so that your networking devices can send information, okay. <clears throat> so as you see in this diagram, there are different types of wires. You can see uh, <clears throat> an uh, RJ45 cable. Okay, I hope you would have seen this in your college days. RJ45 cable, you can see an HDMI cable. This is an HDMI cable. This is a fiber optic cable. Okay, uh, uh, this is a, uh, what do you call, DVI cable. So there are different types of cables. Okay, and these different cables have different speed. Okay, these cables have different speed. In networking, we call the speed as bandwidth. I'm, Bandwidth. Okay. I'm writing the short form as BW. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Myself, Jitendra Kwanza from Odisha. Yes. Tell me, Jitendra. This, this is a not a DVI port. This is the VGA port. Videography, sir. Signal. Video signal. Okay. Box. Yeah, fine. Uh, my mistake. I accept that. Okay. Any cable. It can be any cable. Okay. Be it any cable. I mean, you need the cable to talk to the internet or go through the internet to some other network. That was my intention. Okay. So <clears throat> thank you for correcting me, Jitendra there. Anyway, so these, all these cables will have different, different speed. Okay. So based on the speed, your network, or you can say your speed of your internet or uh, yeah, you, you basically say my internet speed is very high, right? So you sometimes get 200 Mbps speed, right? Sometimes you get 200 Mbps speed or 100 Mbps speed or 50, 20. So all these things, okay, uh, all these wires have different speeds, okay? So the study of these cablings, the speed of these cables, how these cables uh, transmit information from your device to another device, the, the study of these cables come under your physical layer. Okay. <clears throat> so basically your field engineers, okay. Field engineers, they will work with cables or any hardware related issues. They are the ones who usually work. So if you have internet in your home, right? Uh, for example, uh, you called up the Airtel service and you said you wanted an internet right and they will send an engineer and what that engineer does he will install a wi-fi modem okay he will install a wi-fi model and then he will 
connect a cable that cable might be an ethernet cable or fiber optic cable or any kind of cable okay he is the one he is basically he is a field engineer and he works with these cables okay now <clears throat> where would you have come across these cables the first time basically in your computer labs okay you would have seen such kind of connection if you see this is a uh, cat 5e cable okay and if you can see this is a uh, you know uh, uh, tele uh, not telephone cable tv uh, connection so the study uh, of sir, this is rf uh, and uh, yes is this sir a rf cable rf okay it it's an rf cable so it's my a... my point is not to tell you which cable is this about okay the point is how how these cables are important and how these without these cables we cannot connect to the internet in this slides okay so uh, uh, <clears throat> the uh, what do you call it? Uh, rf cable or uh, your uh, cat5 cable or ethernet cable or fiber optic cable be it any kind of cable okay without them you cannot connect now you can ask me a question on my phone right on my phone i am not using any cable how is that possible it's not connected to a cable right but still your phone is basically sending if <clears throat> your phone is basically sending some information to the nearest telephone tower okay it is sending the information to its nearest telephone tower and that telephone tower is connected to different many other telephone towers through wires okay this is one way of communication or the other chances it is connected to our satellite and then these wires are talking to each other so <clears throat> you cannot completely avoid physical connectivity uh, to go to the internet the next is your data link layer that is your layer now in this data link layer okay you can see a diagram where i uh, where there is a mention of vlans okay and you can see uh, <clears throat> a device called as switch or a bridge okay before we understand what is a vlan or a switch or anything we'll first have to understand what was the intention of creating a computer okay as i have studied the intention of uh, creating or inventing a computer was to do faster mathematical calculations okay so your computer can do faster maths okay that was the first intention to create a computer then as uh, the technologies started to develop they thought i want to share the information that my computer has created okay i want to share it with another computer okay that is also okay they started sharing now now what they thought i want my information to be shared with multiple computers so they bought in multiple other computers and they said they can talk to each other okay this is how but then what happened is with four computers you can have you can create four different ports and make them talk to each other but if suppose there are 100 computers or 1000 computers or 10000 computers as technology started to develop right <clears throat> it's not possible to have 10000 ports to connect different or unique computers with each other so they came up with a solution and that solution was to create some kind of device that will help them distribute or uh, sorry that will help them distribute the traffic with them so they came up with the first uh, networking device i would say which was called as a hub a hub okay now what basically a hub does is you can connect multiple devices to a hub so this is pc1 pc2 pc3 and pc4 what it basically hub does is if pc1 sends an information to the hub 
hub will duplicate it or create multiple copies of the same information and pass it on to PC2, PC3, and PC4. This was the work of a hub. So you can connect multiple devices based on the number of ports inside a hub. And then PC1 can send those information to all the devices connected to that hub. That was the intention of creating a hub. But then now as technology is developed, they said, I do not want to send the information to all the PCs. I just want to send the information from one to two only. I do not want the information to be sent to three and four. What can I do? They created a device called a switch. Okay. This was the first intelligent switch. This was the first intelligent switch, which can transfer traffic based on something. And that something was MAC address. We'll talk about MAC address when we get down to the data link layer in the next few sessions. Okay. Now MAC address in general is a unique address. Just like our house address. It is a unique address. So all these PCs, they have a MAC address. Now, if PC one wants to talk to PC two, all it needs to do is it needs to write its own source MAC address and it needs to write the destination MAC address, which is PC two's MAC address and forward it to the switch. The switch will read the destination MAC address and forward it to two. What happened here is it created, it basically helped the different PCs to, to have a privacy first of all. Okay. Where no other PCs can listen to it because the switch will know the source and destination Mac and it will forward the traffic based only on that. So PC three and PC four will not know of what the information is. So it created a privacy. And back in those days, it was also a kind of a security feature. Okay. Switch provided some kind of security. <clears throat> now, then what happened is technologies developed. Okay. More and more people started having uh, switches in their uh, network switches in their uh, uh, campuses. Okay. So for example, let's take IIT. Let's take the example of IIT. IIT is our huge campus, right? Now it's not, obviously it is not going to happen that IIT is just uh, going to survive over one switch. Obviously it will have many switches inside the IIT. So <clears throat> what happened is you have switch one, for example, and switch two. Okay. <clears throat> and what you can do is you can connect multiple PCs to these switches. And all you need to do is you need to enter the Mac address and the source, sorry, the source address and the destination address into these PCs. Okay. And the switch will do the rest of the work. It will forward it, forward those traffic to the destination Mac address or the destination PC. Right. Now there was a problem created after the technology started to develop. The problem is, for example, these two PCs, for example, these two PCs are part of mechanical department. Okay. And these two PCs are connected or are in some other area of the IIT, one sir, corner of the IIT. I have a question, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, you just told us that uh, there was a privacy feature of okay. the switch mm -hmm. and second, the security feature. Mm -hmm. So privacy, okay, understand that means privacy means if uh, only one and two computer wish to talk. So mm -hmm. that's understood. Mm -hmm. So well, how can security be explained over here? <clears throat> okay. So when I said security, I, yeah. uh, I am talking about security from those days, not from the present scenario. Okay. 
okay so when you have a privacy meaning yeah. if only one and two can talk that yeah. means the communication between one and two is also secure because only those two will understand their communication not three and four so if there is a privacy let's yeah. say that where is the pen okay here so if say a and b are talking okay yeah. there is a connectivity here c okay and d also okay so <clears throat> a is sending the information only to c so basically they are it's a private communication okay because it is a private communication okay it is also secured because only a and c will understand in those days back in 1980s or 1970s not i am not talking from the present scenario okay, okay. because it's a one to one communication not one to many so your information is isolated private and as well as secure because only a and c will understand it not b and d that was my intention of saying it is secure okay 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 <clears throat> all right thank you now moving on as i was saying so iit is a huge area and uh, these two pcs are in one corner and they are part of a mechanical department okay and let's say switch 2 also has pcs connected to them which are part of mechanical departments for example these two okay now what happened is if this pc okay if this pc pc number 1 wants to talk to pc number 2 here all it needs to do is write source mac address destination mac address and forward it with two pcs or three pcs it's easy okay where i will just mention the source mac address and destination mac address and forward it but then let's say that i have a copy or i uh, let's say i want to uh, share a test paper okay i want to share a test paper or exam paper with all the mechanical teachers there are 100 mechanical teachers for example in iit there are 100 mechanical teachers okay so can i keep writing source ip and destination ip sorry source mac and destination mac everywhere it is a tedious work it is possible but it is very tedious work and time taking work okay no you can't do that it it's it, we can but it's uh, it's it's a time taking it's, process understand so, so what we did we came up with a solution for that we came up with a solution something called as vlan virtual lan okay virtual lan where what i did is i grouped these two mechanical user pcs into a vlan i'll explain vlan when we are talking about vlan okay but just understand i have grouped these two pcs and given them a number called as vlan number 10 and also these two pcs i have given them something called as vlan number 10 now when this mechanical teacher pc number 1 he sends some information it will only go to the users who are part of vlan number 10 okay so what happened is that my communication got easier with growing network though my network is growing but then it is still easier for me to distribute or talk to the same uh what do you get what same minded people okay so here as i was saying the mechanical user or the mechanical teachers can share exam papers to only mechanical teachers by using something called as vlan id so any information sent at vlan number 10 will be received by any other user or any other person who is also a part of vlan number 10 similarly any other person who is a part of vlan 20 30 or 40 will be able to talk to any other user who is a part of vlan 20 30 or 40 that again here what happened there is a privacy only 40 vlan users can talk to each other okay so if 30 user wants to talk to 40 user he cannot talk 
Okay, if 20 user wants to talk to 40 user, he cannot talk. So what happened? You have a privacy, you have a security as well. So <clears throat> communication between the users, even using switches got easier with the introduction of VLANs. So study of these LANs, VLANs, how switches talk to each other, okay, and how switches will manage each other, how switches will learn VLANs, how switches will uh, understand that a particular user is a part of one VLAN and uh, this particular user is a part of another VLAN. That study we will be learning in the data link layer. Okay. So <clears throat> usually if you have uh, seen a server room, okay, a server room basically looks like this. These are different routers or switches, which are basically connected like this. So you can think that uh, <clears throat> all these wires, okay, all these wires, some of them may be part of VLAN number 10. Some of them may be a part of VLAN number 20. Some of them may be a part of VLAN number 30, okay. So this is how you <clears throat> in real time, physically, how you differentiate different VLANs. Basically VLAN is used for subdividing the department. Am I right? Yes. It's, it's for now, for yes, you, you can think of it like that. Yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> subdividing different uh, departments or networks so that only those networks can talk to each other. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> Any other question with uh, data link layer? Anyone else? Till now, everything is clear. Till now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Now, the third layer, network layer, layer three. It's called as the network layer. Now, as network engineers, we will be dealing with mostly the layer two, that is our data link layer, the network layer, and the next layer, that is layer four, which we which will continue after some time. <clears throat> so in this network layer, what do we study? As you can see, this small branch is, is one LAN network, local area network. This is another LAN network. This is another LAN network, okay. Now, if you want two different LAN networks to talk to each other, you need something called as a WAN, W-A-N. Or for example, you can think that this LAN network is of, uh, let's say that this is of Mumbai. Okay, this LAN network is of Mumbai. This is of Delhi. Okay, and this is of Chennai. Right. So if you want these different city networks to talk to each other, okay, they have to go through a network called as WAN, okay, which is called as wide area network. Okay. And now how can you understand visually? How do you understand WAN network visually? Let us go through that. So you can see a map in front of you. Now let's consider this. Okay. <clears throat> Coimbatore is a, a source. Okay. Or I am starting my journey from Coimbatore and I am going till Chennai. This is my destination. All right. Now listen carefully to understand layer three. Okay, how do you visualize this? I'm trying my best to explain you. Understand that to go from Coimbatore to Chennai, you have different ways. You have different ways to go from Coimbatore to Chennai. Okay, one is like this. Okay, the other is through here. Or you can go via Mysore, Hosur, Vellu, and Chennai. Okay. There are different ways to go from the source to the destination. Now I am considering only the roads. I'm not considering, uh, you know, flights or trains or anything. I'm just taking the example of going through road. So 
you can consider roads okay roads okay and how can you think of roads in networking in networking these roads are something called as ip internet protocol internet protocol so internet protocol is a kind of road where your traffic or your information or your data basically take the internet protocol road to go from source to the destination okay i'm just giving you similarities between your real time and networking so that it's easier for you guys to understand then if internet protocol is roads what are the vehicles in real time you no know, in real time you can see that you have different vehicles if i want to go from coimbatore to chennai i can use a bike i can go via using a bike okay i can uh, use bus okay i can use a car or i can use a cycle right so these are different ways uh, which i uh, these are different vehicles that i can use on the road to go from source to the destination and these vehicles these vehicles are basically your routing protocols okay routing protocols we'll understand these routing protocols later in our ccna course so routing protocols there are few different routing protocols in our computer network few of them are called as ospf the majorly used routing protocol is ospf okay and then you have isis intermediary uh, system to intermediary system isis eigrp okay and rip rip routing information protocol so these are few vehicles of computer networks which will help your data to go from the source to the destination okay now all these like like i was saying bike okay bike has a uh, <clears throat> what do you say some rules and regulations meaning okay uh, uh, how do you ride a bike basically you need to uh, uh, you know <clears throat> increase the accelerator uh, with the hand with your wrist okay that is how you accelerate on the bus okay on the bus you accelerate using the pedal but then your uh, since bus is a huge thing the acceleration is slow the same with car your car is small but is faster than the bus cycle okay you it's it's very slow but and then you have to pedal so similarly all these routing protocols or all these vehicles of computer networks have different features based on your requirement based on your requirement your comfort your convenience you use the routing protocol from the source to a destination okay now <clears throat> if your vehicles are routing protocols that means you need some space you need basically you need some space to uh drive these vehicles space meaning the width of your road okay the width of your road basically width of your road which in computer networks we call it as bandwidth basically bandwidth so for example if it's a two lane road if it's a two lane road okay uh, you cannot drive fast okay because there will be vehicles on right side as well as left side both so it's not easier for you to drive fast if it's a four lane road four lane meaning four lane on the left in uh, uh, going side and the incoming side so basically not four lane it's an eight lane road it's an eight lane road if it's an eight lane road so your road is wide if your road is wide you can drive fast okay 
so as your bandwidth increases your speed increases okay right so your width is can be compared to the bandwidth in your internet side then these locations that you see salem erod tiruvannamalai vellur or pondicherry all these things all these locations <clears throat> you can think of them as a device in layer 3 which is called as a router these locations you can think of them as routers okay now what happens is that if you are traveling from coimbatore okay i reach e road when i reach e road what do i do i check how can i go to chennai from e road which road should i use which should be my i have entered e road from one road now i want to go to chennai which should be my exit road now i use the exit road on e road and then i came down to salem now i have reached salem now from salem i need to use an exit road to reach the next destination that is tiruvannamalai give me a minute sorry i need to take this call give me a minute <clears throat> all right sorry about that so each of these locations basically tell you how to go how to reach your destination routers also do the same thing when some traffic <clears throat> reaches a router it basically does some kind of calculation of how to forward the traffic which it has received okay so i hope you guys now know uh, 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 what are we going to learn in the layer 3 any questions with layer 3 all right i take that as a no moving on the <clears throat> fourth layer that is the transport layer now if you see this picture here you uh, these are few pictures from the whatsapp you wish you usually see the first one if you see here when you send a message it gives you a one single tick mark then that means the message has been sent to the whatsapp server the, okay and whatsapps uh, because your friends network is not connected to the internet it has not been received on your friends phone when your friend receives this message it gets double tick right and then when your friend reads this message it turns to a blue tick how do you know this okay your mobile phone is getting all this information basically your friend's phone is sending some information to your phone telling all these things i have it has not received it has received and uh, someone uh, your friend has read the message similarly when you send a message and it does not get delivered okay you receive some message not delivered how does your phone know or how does your whatsapp know that the message is not delivered okay or you are trying to download an image but that uh, download failed it's through an error how does your whatsapp know this it is all part of your transport layer basically your phone is getting an acknowledgement it is getting an acknowledgement from your phone a uh, friend's phone that it has either received it or not received the message based on that you are taking some action and that action is to basically resend the message right all this acknowledgement okay all this thing in real time is happening over your 
transport layer. So basically your transport layer is helping you or helping the networking device uh, is helping the networking device for an acknowledgement so that your messages or the information that you want your friend or yourself uh, to be shared is not uh, incomplete or basically is complete. Another example is that um, your bank transactions, right? If you're doing a bank transaction. Okay. So for example, you went inside your bank uh, a website and you entered your account number and you said you want, uh, you, uh, you said you need to see your balance. Okay. You clicked on, okay. What happens? The, this message basically goes to the server bank server and the server sends back that information and you can see your balance. Okay. If for example, this server is not able to produce all the information, you will see some information missing on your website. When those information is missing on your website, that means the server has not sent all the information to your browser and your browser will again request for those missing information. When that missing information is again sent by the server, all the information on your screen is full. Okay. This is one example. Another example is that you're watching <coughs> Netflix, right? You're watching Netflix. Sometimes what happens is that your screen suddenly gets stuck, right? Or it starts to buffer. Okay. It's the movie is running flawlessly. Suddenly it starts to buffer. Okay. That means that your PC is talking to the Netflix server and the Netflix server is responding with all the information or that movie. Suddenly what happened? Your Netflix server stopped sending that information. Okay. So your basically your PC is again asking the network Netflix server, buddy, you need to keep sending me that information. And till that information is received by the Netflix server, your laptop or your mobile phone will keep on buffering. All this happens on your transport layer. Another real time example, your watching cricket live. Okay. You're watching live You're watching cricket live. Okay. What happens? And it's not hot star or not hot star. You're watching live on your TV. You would have noticed sometimes that, you know, there's a glitch. There is a glitch on your live stream and, and that glitch is for five seconds and you cannot rewind it. You cannot rewind this five seconds. What happened? Suddenly, you know, you know, the bowler is bowling. And suddenly there is a glitch. The screen goes blank. You cannot see it. And after five seconds, you see that uh, uh, the batsman is out and you are angry. Like what happened? Right? So those five seconds basically is missing. Okay. Now <clears throat> in real time, there are two scenarios. One is where you receive acknowledgement, just like what we saw in Netflix example and your bank example, you receive an acknowledgement. This acknowledgement is given by a protocol on your transport layer, which is called as TCP transport control protocol. We'll understand TCP later in your CCNA sessions. The second thing is where you do not receive an acknowledgement. You do not receive an acknowledgement. Okay. That protocol is called as UDP user data gram protocol. So the zoom session that we are having now is basically running on UDP. Okay. I can show you, uh, sorry. <clears throat> so this is an application called as Wireshark. Okay. And this Wireshark is, uh, helps in real time 
it captures all the information that is going on. So if you see, you can see some information running. This information is basically going from my laptop or my Wi-Fi adapter to all of you. So if you see here, uh, I, I will not go into all the details of it. You see, it says user datagram protocol that I was telling you about now. So all the real time scenarios basically is running on UDP where my PC or the Zoom session on my laptop is not expecting, is not expecting an acknowledgement. My PC is not basically expecting an acknowledgement from your Zoom session. Okay, because if you do not hear my voice, <clears throat> you will not hear my voice. And then what you will say, sir, we cannot hear you. And then I will repeat it. Okay, so all your live streaming, all your uh, live matches, all of that happens over UDP. Basically, it's a broadcast. All the broadcast sessions happens over UDP. The rest of the applications where you need an acknowledgement, okay, that happens over a TCP session. So all of that we will learn in your transport layer. The last layer, which is called as application layer, right? And in this application layer, you will see that <clears throat> on your browser, okay, your Zoom session, are the Zoom session right now is basically running on the application layer. Application layer is all what you see on your screen. Okay. So the understanding of what is going behind this application layer. For example, in this diagram, you can see what happens when you type an address on your browser. For example, google.com. What happens you type google.com? Okay. You will see some buffering. Okay, when you type a google.com and on the bottom uh, corner of your screen, you will see you will see a buffering here, right? And then your page loads. So in those microseconds, there are a lot of things that happens where your PC converts the google.com into an IP address. Okay, and then that IP address will have a TCP connection and using the TCP connection, your messages, whatever your PC is asking, your PC would be asking some information from the google.com. Okay. So using your, the IP address and with that IP address, it creates a TCP session. We'll understand what is a TCP session after some time in our CCNA course <clears throat> using that TCP session, the Google server and your laptop are basically exchanging information with each other. And once that exchange of information is complete, you will see your page full with all the information. All this happens behind your application layer or basically your laptop or your phone or your smart TV is doing this. Right? Any questions in any of these layers? Any question till now? All right, I take that as a no. Now, <clears throat> the last, what's in it for me? Thing is, once you understand uh, the basic requirements, basically when oh, the CCNA, inside CCNA, there are many things, routing and switching, as we were talking, routing and switching is the study of wired connectivity. Okay. Basically wired connectivity. Then okay. this wired connectivity should have some security features so that your data is safe. Okay. Is secure, is encrypted, all that thing. That is a study of security. Right. Then. Okay data centers you have something called as data centers right yeah. so all your what is a basically a data center your netflix uh netflix server okay netflix server google server yahoo server basically all of them are sitting inside a big room it's a called as a server room 
Okay. Yeah. And this server room are connect inside the server room. You have many networking devices. You have routers, you have uh, server devices, you have switches, all that thing. So this server room, you can assume that as one 